Okay, folks, Phil the B-Man here. I had a question on the YouTube uh, discussion uh, asking me to explain how to work with nukes a bit more. Uh, I think the question was was focused on the timing of it, but I'd like to maybe, uh, I'm thinking about how to answer that question. I think let's let's dial back to first principles first and then work from there. So I'm going to just do a quick video on nukes, what they are, what they, sh what they can be, and then I'll do another video on how I use my nukes in my operation to supply a pretty good portion of the queens I need each year. So that's the plan. Um, so first of all, what is a nuke? And I think the name uh, has been a bit uh, disconnected from its origin. Certainly the, the, the name itself implies that that core, the central part of a beehive, uh, but without the extra stuff. So typically has a queen and enough bees to rear brood. And at the same time, isn't the whole beehive. And so that tends to uh, make a nuke unsustainable in the long term. A nuke doesn't have enough space to, be, to allow sort of normal growth. And if you confine a, a nuke just to the space in that box, typically it would either completely plug out, possibly swarm, possibly make a big mess. Um, and if the nuke is too small, it can't carry itself through long periods of dearth. It doesn't have enough food reserves, doesn't have enough bees to last through uh, the kind of winter we have here in Canada. So you've got the core, but you don't have everything you need. And thinking about the, a nuke that way, I think, helps you discipline your thinking about what a nuke can and cannot do. I've got a couple different types and, and I don't want to get too uh, technical here, but I like to think of nukes as those that are uh, capable of holding standard frames. I use of course uh, uh, standard North American uh, Langstroth deep frames. and uh, But if you're in a different part of the world and you use a a slightly different dimension in your frame type, that's cool. But if a nuke would be a smaller version that held that same type of frame. A non-standard would be some frame you've got specialized just for your nukes that don't integrate with the rest of your colonies. And so for instance, I've got here a baby nuke high. This is based on a California uh, type mating nuke. And it has these cute little frames uh, that, um, and this, this nuke would hold three of those on each side and can be used as sort of a bare minimum amount of bees you would need to allow a queen to mate, return, start to lay, prove herself, and then she could be caught and sold to, uh, or, or used in your own operation or sold. And to integrate with those frames into my operation, I have a specialized box. Uh, this is a standard, well, it's basically the size of a Langstroth medium. And with dividers running down the middle so that I can hold uh, these frames in there. So that's, that's, kind of a, a nice solution to the fact that that tiny nuke, the frames don't fit naturally in the Langstroth boxes. I also have four, five, and six frames. I only have one six, and I typically use it as my queen bank. And so it has these rubber straps, an old inner tube tire 
for, to hold the lid on so it can be tossed in the back of a pickup without losing the lid. And then it is essentially standard length of, a, of my regular supers, but a shorter end wall. And that's probably when this was made. I didn't make this. I, I inherited this from somewhere. Someone used a standard sidewall with commercially cut handles and then just ma uh, made their own end wall. And then permanently attached a floor to it. Uh, so that's a six. Notice the screening allows the ventilation and then a trap door or a sliding door to allow the bees uh, free flight uh, under when you wish. So that's a six frame. And you'll see some beekeepers um, use these in combinations, and I'll talk about that in a bit. I also have fives. Here's a five. This is a pretty fancy nuke. Uh, Hang on a second here. I think if I stand this this way, this will work pretty good. So, again, screen, except this time uh, the entrance is screened, and there's also a screened hole in the bottom, and A screen hole in the lid. These wax dip nukes were very prone to overheating uh, when they were closed. So lots of ventilation and holds five frames. And so um, often a beekeeper like myself would use this essentially as a tool in splitting where you would find the brood you need from a hive and either leave the queen or put the queen in, um, keep the door closed, and that way you can work all day without the bees from each hive that you work drifting back to the original hives. You want the vents open, stored in the shade, typically maybe on the shady side of the truck or under some trees so they don't overheat. At the end of the day, you take them off to the new site. At dusk, open the doors, and you you have consistently the nukes have been made up the way you want them and they might only stay in those nuke boxes for a very brief period uh, before you transfer them back into standard hives. Commercially available uh, these are the Jester nuke boxes from Florida they have become quite popular uh, tremendous thought has been put into the ventilation. All four walls have, have perforations to allow good ventilation. And uh, these also have a closable door. You flip it closed like that. And so, and the advantage of these is they're not terribly expensive or complicated. And you can afford to include it in the sale if you're selling a nuke. And if you buy bees in a nuke, you want to hang on to this. I don't want to say that because lots of the guys that sell them want them back. But these can be, like I said, pretty handy for working your own bees, being able to put uh, you know, a new hive, start it in here, close it up, maybe even haul it in your car to a new location. And I've got Four frame nukes. I've used, made these years and years and years ago. Uh, I had a contract to pollinate uh, canola inside closed pollination tents uh, years ago, and that I didn't know at the time that became uh, Roundup Ready canola. But um, that was a big part of the start of my beekeeping career because we I'd have to make tons of nukes in the spring to pollinate these hundreds of tents, and then I'd have these leftover nukes. Uh, at the at the end of the pollination season, and it's like, okay, what do I do now? And I would, I, so figuring out how to winter them was an important part of my early beekeeping career. And two, these are four framers. The space in here will hold four frames quite comfortably with a little bit of overlap. 
And these boxes, if you put two of them side by side, you might do that. like this, put two of them side by side, they actually make exactly the size of a regular, uh, this is a, I've got an excluder here that's standard for my equipment, show that I now, if I either stack them carefully on top of a pallet or a high stand, or I was cheap and poor, so I'd find old bee boxes that were too rotten to be used, and I would just use those as stands and put uh, these on top. And then you could put a honey super or two on top and let them continue to grow without blocking out. And, and then you could work with them more. So uh, those are my nuke boxes. So common features of all of these tend to be that you've got a door you can open and close so you can control when the bees have free flight. You've got enough ventilation so that if you do use the door, uh, you're not going to cook those bees. I've, I've had that trouble. You make a really strong nuke, you think, boy, this one's going to make me a lot of honey. Uh, and then uh, maybe it's uh, you park the truck for a little too long or it's wedged between two other hot ones or the sun shines a bit more than you thought and uh, those bees by the time you open the door that evening kind of greasy and sad and the brood got too hot and it, it that hive will never do as well so the ventilation is critical and now when you're making them up as I said, typically a, a beekeeper who's making nukes either for sale or for themselves is not plan. He's got more bees in that nuke than that nuke box can comfortably hold as that hive develops. And so it'll need to be transferred into another hive. When you try to keep those bees in that nuke, then you've got kind of a problem because uh, as I said, this that nuke box is not designed for long-term hives, but you want, suppose I say I, I could use, I don't want to pinch these a whole bunch of queens or combine all these nukes together into a few hives. I want to uh, run these nukes through the winter. And really the critical concept, I think, is to realize that individually those nukes aren't strong and viable on their own but maybe if you let them help each other then you can winter them you can see them through and so my thinking here is is a couple things first of all like a lot of Canadian beekeepers I winter my bees inside so that means that all of my hives are helping them, each other keep warm and and uh, keep happy. So that's that's cool. Um, and another thing is, as I said, I could put those nukes together. I think you, uh, you, if you're familiar with Ian Stepler's process, he uses six frame nukes and he puts three of them together and that conforms to two standard size boxes. And so that allows him to use his standard equipment to let those nukes grow and develop and, and have lots of bees throughout the summer without choking out on their own honey by being able to store the honey above the queen excluders and then having really more population than a hive of that size normally would have. And then by sharing heat and sharing um, resources throughout the winter, uh, those nukes can be carried through, in, whereas if it was just one, uh, one six frame, or in my case, five frame nukes, would not make it through winter on their own. So that's my thinking about nukes. Not sustainable by themselves, can be sustainable if they're used in combination either with uh, similar nukes, or um, I see beekeepers now in our area wintering nukes on top of large standard hives. So the heat 
that are wrapped up in the same insulation system. The heat from the small hive comes up into the large, uh, into the nuke and, and helps carry through the winter. There was a beekeeper uh, in our area some years ago who was using um, uh, lots of nukes. He packed them all into one great big bundle and he had uh, kind of a no freeze electric heating system underneath, I think it was basically a um, thermostatic heat tape commonly used to wrap around pipes to keep them from freezing. He'd lay that back and forth in a coil and, and pack all his nukes on top of that. And with that extra little bit of help, those nukes, which would normally not be sustainable, were able to make it through the winter. Uh, so when we're thinking about nukes, we're thinking can't make it on their own, but with some careful beekeeping, you can get them through dirts or winters or the, the trial part of a beekeeping career, right? You know, you can keep bees alive in the summer without a whole lot of trouble. Keeping them through to the next good season, that's the, that's the key to being a beekeeper. And the smaller your hive is, the harder that is. And so um, what, of course, beekeepers like myself want is to have as many kind of total units at the start of the next cycle. So when I come out of spring, not only do I want lots of big strong hives, but I need the queens in order to uh, re, re, uh, distribute all those bees into as many units as I, as I can get. And so having wintered nukes allows me to have more operating units faster than if I relied on only large hives and only purchased queens. Or if I used uh, my, little, my little nukes, and I don't, honestly, I don't use these as much as I should, but uh, I think partly because the system I'm using is pretty successful. Because if I was to wait for a mating nuke to make my split, so I would only when the weather's good, stock this, it's, you know, this is a really small unit, it, it cannot take uh, Canadian weather until May, right? maybe even mid-May before you'd want to stock something like this. And then it's the end of May or maybe late, maybe even now in June when you start having mated queens available coming out of here. I've already made my splits. So it, the timing is tough, right? The, if we're used to availability of queens from warmer climates to stock our, our, our hives. And so if I'm going to wait till my local queens catch up with my production hives, uh, the timing just doesn't work out. And so by bringing that queen through the winter season and having her available right, right at the crack of spring, uh, that's what's working for me. And I think that the original question asked was about the timing. How do you make all that work? I think the timing kind of sorts itself out once you sort of get in your head. The nuke can't make it on its own. I need a plan to combine them into larger units, essentially. And so uh, you'll see other videos of mine where I have the twin hives. I don't have any to show you because they're all in use. Uh, but you'll have seen in my other videos uh, a kerf and a divider running down the middle. Two, essentially, what two five-frame nukes. Um, I used to use lots of those four-frame nukes, uh, basically nailed together. Uh, the four frames, uh, they had a real hard time holding enough feed in those four frames to make it through my winter. But um, the five frames work quite well, and. Uh, so when you combine them into units, allow, that allows you to integrate them with your standardized equipment, excluder, stack up the boxes, sometimes, and sometimes they'll make a lot of honey. But if they don't make at least one box of honey, they're probably not going to make it through winter. So they can't just stay in that bottom box. They've got to be able to have enough population to really get going. And um, so it's 
allowing the nuke to outgrow its own uh, capacity, which in my opinion is the key concept in wintering nukes. And I see other beekeepers playing with um, essentially half-sized boxes that they're stacking up on top of each other to achieve that. Uh, I think it's cool, but you know, two, two five or two six frame nukes that have six frame or five frame supers on top, that's not really a whole lot different than a 10 frame box. Like you're just, you're just rearranging. The total cubic size is the same. So uh, at that point is really not a nuke anymore. It's just a non-standard hive body. Um, and I'll probably take some flack for that, but, uh, you know, it, it's a one way, but I think those guys are also thinking, how do I pack more hives into a, uh, a place that's trying to keep itself warm? The bees do like to work vertically. So there's, there's some, something to it, but, uh, 10 frames box is 10 frame box. Okay. I think that's kind of an intro to nukes and what they are. And then I'll do uh, kind of a quick uh, sort of day-by-day -day, uh, thought through on how once you have these nukes wintered, how you queen them, how you restock them. Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good day.